Hey, what's up guys? And back with a couple more games here today. Uh, this time we're having back-to-back -back games I had about a month ago in the Super Conquer and the Wheezy 5A, the Chinese T9, or Tier 10 Heavy Tank. Jeez. Um, so the first one's going to be the Super Conk, and it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> I'll just be completely frank. What we're going to do this match, we're going to go up to the AB line on the north side of the map. And we're going to get hauled down and basically they're not going to be able to push us. Yeah, see I think this match, yeah, I was playing with this night I was playing with AJ. And we were kind of a little bit of bantering about this tank, how it can kind of get a little... This thing, when it gets hauled down, I feel like it's just basically unstoppable. To an extent, if you can't flank it or anything like that, once this thing gets the gun going, it, it's really hard to dig this tank out. And in my opinion, this the spot I'm going to be at is probably one of the best spots for the Super Conk and any of the maps to a degree, if you have support and again, if they don't push you. So, honestly, these two tanks I've had for probably since the fall, but... I have an issue where if I get a new tank, especially some tier tens recently, I'll get them. I'll play maybe five or maybe ten matches in it, and then I'll kind of just start playing other stuff. I don't know why this is. I don't know. I just it's even the case for when I'm playing through my garage. I don't play like just one tank or whatever, whatever again usually. I usually bounce around. I don't just play one thing and try to get in a groove with one tank. I end up bouncing around. It's not a, always the greatest thing. Um, but for some reason, I haven't played these tanks very much. I don't even have marks on them yet, if that kind of tells you. So I definitely need to start hopping in these a little bit more. Uh, especially the 5A. I really, really like the 5A. Just for the mobility and the gun and rate of fire of it, I really need to start playing it more keep telling myself that I keep saying that on stream and other stuff and it never happens and see here I use the dip on this version because they can sometimes spot you coming across here so maybe it saves you a little bit of uh, hassle you see we're very very alone over here I was kind of worried but I was like I'm gonna go this way is this is really risky because all we have every for support is a stock M46 Patton who in reality isn't going to do anything. So we're just haul down, keep pulling back as this uh, 57 Heavy unloads his clip and somehow he bounces his last one on the, the pad. So now I'm going to push up just enough so I can put a shot into him, but I know I'm not going to peek too much because usually on that back ridge line, as the patent is found out, they have other other tanks riding Overwatch and in this case it's 704 and possibly some other stuff. This Patton, I don't know. If, I don't know. He's here Enemy's just to kind of absorb hit counters. points, I think, at this point, for me. I mean, uh, <laughs> he's not going to do much. You see, we're just, we're so hot and we've already blocked 2,000 damage almost. And we're just barely showing enough so that, ooh, excuse me. Um, they can't. Uh, shoot our weaker, weaker haul, which even uh, I forgot about that shot. Yeah, I was going for the 57 heavy and ended up hitting the tank uh, driving right behind him. You see, I'm on, I'm not worried, but I see the C75 started trying to get some positioning on us, so I'm gonna focus in. My real goal is to get the 57 heavy out, just because if he gets up on us, he can dump 1600 damage into us within an instant. So I really want to get rid of the auto loader. It's just my goal. At this point, is to get rid of him because he just provides the most well DPM honestly because he only has about a 22 second reload if he's fully maxed out. So I'm not even worried about the C5. I mean I am, but he's so far back that he's not the biggest threat at the moment. So at this point, we're just kind of waiting, the, wait, doing our waiting game. Let them make mistakes again, especially in this situation where. 
we're the only tank basically over here versus probably five or six enemy tanks. So we're just letting them make the mistakes because we basically have to at this point. We can't play aggressive. We just have to be a roadblock. And that's basically what I was this game, which is be a roadblock. And be a roadblock that's effectively, <laughs> effectively dishing out the damage as well. And they're not going to want to push us. That's the great thing about this tank compared to like the Chieftain. The armor really lets you... You can hold a flank. I mean, you can actually effectively hold something. Your rate of fire is not as good as the Chieftain, but it's it's almost at that level. So it's still pretty good. And at this point, they're kind of not interesting me anymore. So I'm going to push them to the secondary location. It's still pretty hauled down at this point. I'm still fairly safe. And I see I have another medium pushing up with me. So I feel I'm fairly good to go here at this point. Especially with many of them being one shot to this at this stage of the game. So we can just start rolling in here and just dishing them out. So, funny enough, I was laughing at AJ at this moment. Man, we bounced all this damage so far, like 4,000. And then the, this RU just RBRTs me on the move, basically, and pens me twice. We were kind of laughing about that in game. We were like, what the hell? Like, what, what gives? The freaking light tank of all things starts penning me uh, frontally. It's kind of funny, but... And we're going to line up the shot on the... And it does not come off. These games, like I said, were about from a month ago, and I'm re-watching them for the first time. So, I'm kind of here with the ride with you guys. Uh, trying to remember destroyed. what these games were like. I know they were, spoiler alert, it's going to be in the title anyways. But they were games, I did both over 7,000 damage, and again, these were back-to-back -back games in the same session. So... A really, a really great Ready result, and kind of, I think this was actually the, I had three 7,000 damage games this night, I think they were all, and the other one was the Gonalo, which you guys, on Lakeville, which you guys saw a few weeks ago. And now we just came up on this E5, and we're gonna, well, we were gonna track him, try to hold him in, in place, but at this point, we're just gonna let him, and at this point in the game, when we have so many hit points left, we can just afford to use them and it really yeah you, you can see what happens when they don't push you and they just let you let you go to work with your uh, DPM in this thing it's pretty nasty so here I decided to load a uh, HE round I'm pretty sure the HE rounds on this thing like most of the high tier British tanks have about 120 pen compared to like other tank uh, other nations heavy tanks where the HE rounds are a little less. And that's just because it's like a Hesh variant, I guess. But because they only have a batch at AP and an RU, I'm figuring I'm going to try to get a pen on one of these guys. Now at this point, I was like, I'll probably get one more shot in this game. But And there's a little friend, and he's probably not having the most enjoyable time. And if we put Ram him, and we just tap him and track him for, in place for damage. Unfortunately... That we do pick up our fifth kill here, but as you see, the, the RU just kind of effectively committed suicide basically, just ran into our TDs. And we're able to finish up with 7,700 damage, 4,000 blocked, and about all, just under 900 assists. I was joking with AJ, that was probably one of the easiest games I've ever played in a heavy tank. And just hauled down, just sat there, and just dishing out the damage. And I don't believe there was any arty in that game, so even if there is arty in that, on that type of map, there's still, you know, I'm pretty sure you're safe most of the time, as long as you don't back up too far, or as long as they don't have the CGC, which, yeah, no worries you'll say from that, but, alright, we're gonna hop into the second game, and again, Bloom Doom with uh, AJ, same session, this was the game right after, uh, but this time we were in the 5A, which, again, is probably one of my favorite tanks that I don't play much. Every time I seem to take this thing out, I dish out probably close to 5,000 damage, it seems like. I know it's not actually the case, but it's just selective memory. But it really does feel like this thing is probably China's best medium tank. <laughs> just because, I mean, just look how fast this thing moves. Already up to 50 kilometers an hour, you can't believe this is a heavy tank. And it has a whopping, I think, 130 millimeter. 
so 490 alpha and it reloads about two seconds quicker than the i7 as I think Swindle said in his latest video or his first video back which you guys should definitely go check him out again since he's putting videos out again so definitely recommend go check out him again pretty much same style as me now that I'm doing commentary again but so with the speed of this I felt like I was, this match that I'd flank around this side Generally with heavies, I'd probably actually go right and try to be aggressive and get hauled down over there or I brawl out in the city, but this thing isn't the best in the form of brawling in the city type of format. You kind of want to use the turret armor. It does have some weak spots on the turret, but if, as long as you move back and forth, you can hide them fairly well. But just due to the mobility of this thing, I felt like it was just better just to... Uh, Uh, just take it on a flank and run around the, the village, basically. Uh, unfortunately, our first shot somehow bounces off a tier tier eight, and this one doesn't come off either. But that's all right because we got plenty of ammo in this thing. Uh, he takes way too long to back off in the tiger two, so we're gonna slap him for about almost 485. Again, alpha damage about 490. And the reload on it's fantastic. I mean, the DPM on this thing is crazy, crazy, crazy good. So if you can start just laying in these tier eight, uh, tier eight tanks, you can almost potentially three shot them, which is kind of disgusting if you high roll. And at this point, they basically, I know they're all on this side of the map. And we're gonna use this railroad cart as kind of going haul down sort of temporarily. Now we saw the Artie just sit there, so I'm kind of kind of leery about that. And for some reason, the IS-3 has decided to switch to HE already, which is interesting. And we're gonna just gonna shoot him on the move at point blank, cause he's only about 50 meters away, so I feel it's safe just laying that shot out. And IS-3 is still shooting HE. Again, I guess that's more effective than what he'd probably be doing, but it's whatever. And it's crazy to think at this point, you look at the scoreboard, it's already 7-3, to three, that we're getting able to push out that much, uh, um, over 7,000 damage in this game. But it turns fairly quickly. We're going to go and try to side scrape right here. It's a little... Getting, we're ever saying a little bit. I try to go for the weak spot on the 257, which just above the tracks. It, there's a very small space on that tank where you can pan the side armor. E50M's over angling, so we're gonna put one in him. He's the higher tier tank, so we're gonna try to focus him. I'm not too worried about the Tiger 2 carrying the game. I'm more worried about tier 10 carrying the game. I think I just blocked AJ's shot. I'm pretty sure it did. It's my bad. Mr. HE IS3 is back. He lays another one in for us to 100 damage or so. We're just gonna go in and face off this E50M. And we're just gonna shoot right through his turret. That's basically a weak spot. There's no mantlet there. It's easy pen. Every single time we're gonna go through that. And you see, we're basically flanking a uh, medium thing at this point. So this gets a little sketchy. Uh, again, you look at the scoreboard, it's 11 to 5. At this point, I mean, you think this game's basically over. But now that I see their attention turned to us, I'm gonna get behind this rock and start side scraping. And E1 is over angled, so we're gonna start tracking him and putting damage into him. We're able to get a huge roll, 568 into him. And you see the reload on this gun, we're just gonna be able to keep him tracked in place and just keep laying damage into this guy. Now here, I don't know why I stopped side scraping. I just kind of laziness, I, I guess. But now I see the light tanks going in, so I'm going to guess they're going to be distracted. Uh, he's not able to take him out. We're going to switch to HE for the waffle. Hopefully get some nice big rolls in for, and into this guy right now. But, of course, my luck. This is why I don't carry many HE. Even when it does go in, it doesn't... For me, it just always seems like it's not penning. 
So, the second one was just at my fault. That was just an awful shot. I mean, I, I could have been aimed so much better. But, just to give you a little insight of why I don't personally use a lot of HE in my tanks. It's just because the unreliability of it, and it just seems like they always end up hitting the gun, or just missing, or just, I don't know, eating tracks in, against light tanks. So, they're useful, they are good to have a few, obviously, but for me, just my opinion, I don't always carry that many of them. You see the Jaeger is almost full health, and you see this game got way closer than it used to be. It was like 11 to 4 at one point, so let's just put that in perspective. So, I'm on about 1600 health, but at this point, I really don't want to risk eating or getting possibly ammo racked by this guy. So we're just going haul down and putting some heat rounds into him. We saved him for most of the game, and he's a good target to use, use him against. Uh, he angles, so that one's going to bounce. But now that he's behind that rock, we're going to go in and move in behind, uh, move up, use the opportunity to advance. Now, at this point, I wasn't too worried about the Yag. I wanted to get out the Waffle just because I know I can outmaneuver the Yagaru. But, unfortunately, he wants to kind of, I don't even know what happens at this point. This kid's kind of crazy. And we're able to get sneak a shot into the Waffle real quick. But this game got it. I never realized how close this game really got. They almost pulled it back to 2-2 two to two at one point. And then we're able to sneak in the shot on the Yag and finish him off with the Top Gun. And put us over 7,000 damage. A little closer of a game. A little bit different of a game. More mobile. The first game, the Super Concu just kind of sit, sat there playing using the armor. This one, more mobility, more flanking, more positioning, that kind of thing. Two different styles of heavies, really, I think. Though the Weezy still has some usable armor in some aspects. The Conqueror is a slower, more bunker type tank, in a way, especially haul down. Yeah. 